Hey everybody, this is Cups bringing another Monster Hunter Rise video, and uh, with Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak on the horizon and Capcom starting to release some of the uh, weapon trailers, there's been a lot of energy around the community, and people coming into my Twitch chat asking me how to play certain weapons and what they need to know, and uh, what kind of changes I think they'll make and stuff like that. So what I thought I'd do is, you know, over on YouTube there's a lot of uh, guides that are like, you know, 30, 45 minutes long that tell you everything you need to know about the weapon, but some of that's pretty daunting for a lot of people, and a lot of people don't know if they even want to play the weapon. So what I thought I'd do is just kind of do quick little primers, quick little bite-sized guides on how particular weapons work and uh, what you need to know to get trying on them to see if you want to pursue them in, in Sunbreak. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cups. I play Monster Hunter a lot on my Twitch channel. Um, I've done some collaborative stuff with uh, other Monster Hunter creators in the past. I'm a Capcom creator. I, uh, I've done some speed running. I've done some of this and that. I've done a lot of things regarding the Monster Hunter community over the years. And uh, I play all 14 weapons. I mean... You know, between you and I, you know, they, they call me the 14 weapon wonder, you know, because I play all of them at a really high level. I'm just going to be honest, nobody calls me that, but I would appreciate it. it. It'd be a nice favor between you and me if you guys would maybe get the ball rolling on that a little bit. <laughs> but for real though, I've played all 14 weapons a decent amount. And although they might not be as strong at them as some other people, I can give you a general uh, idea of what the meta looks like, which silkbind skills you should be using, which combos, and just generally how the weapon plays so that you can get up and get going on your own. Now, the first one we'll be talking about today is my main for Rise, and that's the Insect Glaive. And I feel like this is a bit uh, misunderstood and like an underrepresented weapon that not a lot of people get how it works. So we'll talk about the weapon mechanics, we'll talk about the combos, uh, which silkbind skills you should be using, and which weapons and armor you should be looking to make to complement the weapon. But without further ado, let's get going on it. Okay, weapon mechanics are how it works. If you look up there in the top left of your corner, you'll see a bug icon, you'll see three diamonds with one, two, and three, and you'll see a little bar that's underneath it. This is basically everything you need to know. The bug icon lets you know which extracts your bug is currently gathered. As you can see, it's got red and orange there. Red you typically get from the head, and this gives you damage and new combo routes. You want to make sure that you have red on at all times. White you typically get from legs and wings. This is mobility. This lets you alt and fly further, and it also lets you run around on the ground better. And then lastly, you have orange that you get typically from back, legs, and uh, tails, and backs, and stuff like that. And this is defense. This gives you extra defense, a couple levels of earplugs, and uh, whenever you put them all together, you have 15% extra damage and max great earplugs so you don't get hit by roars, which is very, very nice. And that's why I'm going to recommend that you use assist type bugs. We'll go to the Kinsex here in a little bit, but assist type bugs gather two extracts at the same time. So this really helps whenever you're trying to have all three extracts up at the same time. Now the little bar that's underneath that, as you can see, is draining down. This is your bug stamina. So whenever you throw your bug out, it has only a limited amount of time out there before it comes back to you. But the main service of it for the assist type bug that I'm going to recommend is that whenever you have all three extracts, uh, it's going to let you team attack with your bug at the same time. As you see, it comes out and gives you a little bit extra damage. But that also uses some of the stamina that's out there. Basic combos for Insect Glaive is there's not really that many. The, a lot of them loop kind of into each other. But the main thing that you're trying to hit as often as possible is the uh, Tornado Slash. And uh, a lot of it is trying to hit as many Tornado Slashes as possible. And that's this move right here, Tornado Slash. So some bread and butter combos that you want to use is I'm going to be doing Torch Triangle, which is Strong Thrust, into Strong Wide Sweep, into Tornado Slash. This is the combo that you're going to be doing most often, and it loops into each other. So you can do Strong Thrust, Wide Sweep, into Tornado Slash, and then right back into Strong Thrust. It kind of cancels the Tornado Slash animation. You basically want to be hitting this one as often as possible, and this is the combo that you want to be doing whenever the monster's in a trap or whenever the monster's down or something like that. This is your strongest, best bread and butter combo. Uh, another one that I like to use is just simply standing strong wide sweep and tornado slash. This has really good reach, so if I'm kind of standing over here on the monster, you can kind of hit him from that distance there. So strong wide sweep into tornado slash. Now if the monster is really tall and standing above you, you can do standing triangle into tornado slash. This is really good for flyers like sniping Rathaloses or Rathians out of the air whenever they're flying around. This gives you a little extra verticality, hits him in the head, I like to use that one a lot. But basically, Tour triangle, standing circle, standing circle. That's what you're trying to do as often as you possibly can. Now, another key thing, this is a little bit advanced, but you'll get used to it the more you practice it, and this is called kinset canceling. Okay, so whenever you watch me finish this tornado slash and see how long it takes my character to stand back to neutral. Tornado slash. That's how long it takes me to get back to neutral. But you can do a thing called kinset canceling. And, you know, you can also roll out of the recovery frames of the Tornado Slash or whatever else, but you don't always want to do that kind of stuff. So you can do Tornado Slash and then send the bug out or recall the bug. And this is really nice because it cancels that animation and lets you start moving again instantly without using your roll or anything like that. So Tornado Slash, 
and you can send the bug out, and it also lets you throw where your cursor is. So let's say I tornado slash this way, I can send my bug out and then immediately start running back that way. And this also lets you, if you're like hitting the monster's head, you can get some extra stun built up or anything like that. Okay, and then lastly, a mechanic that you need to know about is aerial charge levels. Now, this is a fairly new thing that wasn't in if you started in a world or rise, or, or if you started a world in Iceborne or anything like that. This wasn't in. But uh, you have an aerial charge level that your character goes into the air, and the more attacks that they hit into the air, the more damage you do. So that's one aerial charge level. That's two aerial charge levels. And that's three aerial charge levels. And then this makes your diving wyvern do more damage, which is kind of like one of the wirebug skills, which we'll go into in a little bit. But uh, you didn't always want to spend a lot of time in the air in previous Monster Hunter games with Insect Glaive. But uh, they incentivize you really well to spend a lot of time both on the ground and in the air in, in Monster Hunter Rise. So uh, if you're really far away and the monster's stunned or something like that, feel free to do a couple attacks in the air while they're down. Just to close the gap and move yourself up a couple levels. And then you can reposition and do your diving wyvern there to get a ton of damage on the monster's head. And then also, like I said, we'll get into the wirebug skills in a little bit, but uh, there's the forward round slash. This ability right here, not a lot of people know that this is a parry, and this automatically vaults your character in, up into the air. And not only that, it moves you up one charge level. But not only that, it moves you up one aerial charge level. See how it launches you up? Now I'm at level one, level two. Diving Wyvern, good damage there. And that's it. That's your basic bread and butter combos and general mechanics of how the weapon works. Okay, overall gameplay loop is to use your Kinsect to just kind of run around the monster, gather extracts, use your increased mobility from your white extract to move around the monster, wait for the openings to show up, and then tornado slash the monster in the head or whatever else. We got to sleep here. Use your mount. Your diving wyvern to wake up the monster keep tornado slashing the head built up that ko and use your advancing around slash to move up towards the monster and uh, close gaps and punish big openings when it comes to switch skills that i recommend this is the advancing round slash this is one that twirls you on the ground is a parry and also moves you up one aerial level like i talked about earlier tornado slash this is the little spin on the ground that your kinsect will also help you with diving wyvern this gets the benefit of those improved aerial charge levels and if you get you know the right buffs in the right situation on the weak, right weak points with a level three charge you're going to be hitting sometimes even close to into the thousands of damage which is very nice so you want to be dominating the ground with as many tornado slashes as you possibly can and then closing the gap with your aerial mobility hitting some parry attacks and then punching big, big openings that the monster gives you with diving wyvern and i promise you you'll be getting those mounts early and you'll be keeping the monster on the ground and you'll look cool while doing it when it comes to weapons that i recommend there's only one there's only one that you truly need to make and that's the narga kuga insect glaive also called the evening Calm. As you can see, white sharpness, 190 raw, 40% affinity, a level 2 slot, and level 7 kinsect. Now, level 7 kinsect just means that it does a little bit more damage and things like that. Nothing that you really need to truly worry about, but it can really help out. The only insect glaive that you really need to make. It's a pretty good raw weapon, insect glaive. It doesn't have too many good, like, elemental options or anything like that. So this is basically the only one that you need to make. I wouldn't really worry about any other ones. Okay, I'll go through kinsects real fast here. If you look at this, the, uh, the attack type, they're severing and blunt. Severing is cutting damage, and blunt is KO or blunt damage. If you do enough blunt damage to the head, it will KO the monster, so I really like using blunt weapons. But if you're using elemental insect leave, even though I kind of recommend it against it, severing will also take on the elemental property of the weapon. So if you're using a fire insect glaive, you will also have a fire kinsect that goes along with it. But uh, blunt is just impact physical damage. If you look at the kinsect type, there's a couple different ones, but I wouldn't really worry too much about speed or anything like that. I'm just going to recommend the assist type bugs. Like I said, when you have all three extracts, they join in on your attack and you get just an incredible amount of damage on top of it. And if you're using an assist type with blunt type damage, then whenever the bug comes out, it also gives you impact damage to your insect glaive. So if you're doing a lot of tornado slashes and things like that that I recommended earlier, you'll be getting KO if you hit the monster in the head enough completely on your own. Now, if you look at the Kinsect bonus here, it says dual color and then it'll have attack or speed or defense or whatever. Now, the assist type bugs gather two extracts at the same time. Attack is red, so whenever you send the bug out, you will always get red, which is a really nice thing because even if you hit the monster in the tail, then you'll still get red, which is great. And then speed is white and then defense is orange, something like that. But the bug that I really recommend is the Carnage Beetle. Uh, you always get red off of it. It has incredible power, so it helps you whenever you're tornado slashing. Really high kinsect level that goes along with the weapon. 
and then you get the blunt type damage so you get KOs, which is really nice. This is the bug I'd recommend over everything right now. Play around with everything else, see what you like if you continue to show interest in the insect life. Okay, now just for kind of a general purpose end game set, but just, uh, and this isn't for everything, right? Play the weapon the way that you want and you build the way that you want to that you want to play as well you don't have to play super meta or speed run type or everything like that just use these kind of guidelines and if you want to put more health boost in or divine blessing or what have you just makes you more comfortable or more defense then go right ahead but this is a good in-game build that you can kind of work towards and make your own in some way but i have these armor pieces here and then these are the equipped skills that I have. This is attack boost seven, agitator three is not that big of a priority. Crit eye only three, just because the Narcacuga has so much crit that it gives you, you know, this will put me over the 100% whenever I have agitator activated. Crit boost, because you're gonna be critting all the time, as well as weakness exploit, because you're gonna be hitting the head of the monster a lot, the head or the tails or whatever the weak point is. Master's touch is because the insect glaive hits a lot. So you're gonna be um, chewing through sharpness really really quickly as well as the speed sharpening whenever you have a mount or a down or it's caught in a trap or something like that you can uh, speed sharpen and one pass of the whetstone will automatically sharpen your weapon to the full which is really nice sharpness uh, crit up to 100% and then as much damage as you can possibly put on top of it but like I said pick and choose what you want if you want to do divine blessing or some extra defense then go right ahead but building something like this is really important also one level offense free if you like to play with in multiplayer and then I like to do diversion whenever I'm playing solo so that the monster doesn't attack my palico or my palamute I get the focus all the time so that I can be hitting more um, counter attacks and spending more time in the air and I know it's a little bit more predictable for what the monster is going to be doing and that's it for the insect glaive guide real quick real easy let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below or drop my, my Twitch channel if you want to talk more about the game, maybe play some with us and just celebrate being a bug boy or a bug girl, whatever. But see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like if you like more and share with your friends if you think you might have some fellow bug boys or bug girls out there. See you next time. Thanks for watching.